Hello, welcome. This is David Ross, and we're doing another piece on understanding how we know what we know about Islamic uh, history. Uh, today we're going to discuss what the Muslims believe they know, and that is through the Hadith. Now, the Hadith uh, was, is a Muslim tradition. It is, um, starts with the content, which is called the Matan. It is often attributed to a saying or a, an act of the Prophet. And then, um, the, uh, because the Prophet, they claim, was illiterate, and at any rate, not very many people were writing things down, this has been handed on by a form of, of a chain of transmission. The transmission is called Nisnad. Now, what you have here is what the classical um, interpretation. The Prophet would talk to someone like uh, Abdallah bin Masud. And Abdallah bin Masud would say something to his nephew, um, and then his nephew would pass it on to someone else, like, um, oh, it doesn't really matter. But anyway, it eventually goes through a bunch of chains, and finally somebody thinks to write it down in a book. And the book it becomes popular and it gets copied. So that's the, the normal way. And um, as you can see, there's always problems with, with um, hearsay. There's um, One of these might have been a liar. Um, one of these might have misheard what they thought they'd heard. So there has been a whole science around um, hadith analysis and what constitutes a true hadith versus um, something which is which is weak. Something which is weak is termed da'if in the uh, literature, D-A-I-F. Hadith was pr probably first um, called into question in the West by a scholar by the name of Ignaz um, Goldziher. He was a Hungarian uh, Jew. He was working in the 1800s. Um, and he went to al Zar and talked to a lot of the, um, the, the imams over there in, in Egypt. So um, he generally considered that he knew what he was talking about. He often uh, wrote a number of, uh, of essays um, and books. The best one was probably Muhammad Anishi Studia, uh, the, the Muhammadan Studies. And that was, um, so what he found was that a lot of the uh, hadiths were actually based on their content probably propagandistic, like uh, it was unlikely that Muhammad himself was saying that um, Ali was burning in hell or that um, Wawiya was burning in hell. Most likely these traditions would have arisen around the time when there was opposition to Muawiyah on one hand or um, opposition to Ali on the other. Um, now another scholar in the 1950s called Joseph Schacht was doing a, uh, um, a study of Islamic law and uh, he looked at the, um, at the hadiths uh, in a more systematic way and trying to see what their common link was. And, um, what you have is um, often something like this. C1 goes there, C2 goes there, <clears throat> and they go to a bunch of books, sometimes the same book. Book 2 here, there it is. There's another one, book one, whatever. Um, and what's have to often happened is that they will all cluster around B. And this B would then be termed a common link. Anyway, when you have something like this, the um, generally speaking, it doesn't really tell you what the prophet said. It doesn't even tell you what his transmitters would have said. What it would tell you a lot of is what B said. Now, that's the first point. Another point is that... Um, if you have um, another case is where like C goes to some place and C goes to some place else, what you have there is like you might have two common links. Like C is considered a partial common link, um, and then you would triangulate it with C two to find out what B B had to say. And the common link um, has really been uh, most recently nailed down um, by uh, Gautier. H. A. Joinbull, a Dutch scholar who has been, who was writing um, until very recently. I think he passed away like, like only in 2012. But uh, for Joinbull's um, idea is that uh, once once they uh, when you have all these these books, you should um, note down where their partial common links are first. Like what is the common source of uh, all the stuff that got into Ibn Hanbal and Abu Dawood, and then you have a common source of stuff which got into Ibn Abi Shaiba and Ibn Shaba. 
Um, so these are the three that uh, I was looking at when I was trying to study the um, the ap apocalypse about the the, um, the the Mahdi from the Hajjaj. Um, so uh, these three would be uh, would be partial common links. And then if only once you've nailed them down would you be able to go and see a, a common link. There's a number of pitfalls that happened that Julian Ball noticed. Um, he noticed that um, quite often you would have a source who, or so-called source, like a book. It was often Tabaroni. Um, he has a lot of these. But um, he would have a source da, 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 that goes way back here. Um, he called that a dive, um, sometimes a spider. Uh, I'm not sure about spiders exactly, but um, a dive is very intuitive here. So what's happened here is that uh, they, everybody knows about this common link, and everybody um, is now suspicious about it. And so um, later on, like in Tabarani's day, in uh, the 900s AD, or, or thousands AD even, um, he, he would go and look through the most obscure stuff he could find, and uh, he found one that was probably rejected by his contemporaries, and it would go back to the source of this common link. Uh, according to John Ball, you shouldn't do that, because that's, uh, that's an obvious case of forgery, um, misattribution. Uh, now, of course, John Ball also has his own problems, like he can't actually guarantee that this is a real dive. Um, what it could be is that he, the, the guy in between, over here, this para-common link, uh, was, was ignored by accident. Not everything gets preserved. Um, it, or he might have um, had some ideas which, were, uh, um, which, which might have been acceptable at the time, but were later considered to be heresies. Or he might have been a Shiite, horror of horrors. Uh, a lot of people didn't trust the Shia. They still don't. Um, but that doesn't mean necessarily mean we have to, to uh, um, say that nothing they had that was of no merit. Um, so that's why it's really important. You can't just look at the, uh, the Asnads, although they are helpful. They will tell you at least that there is a common link. So you have that guy uh, over here. But um, you, can't always, you can't always say that he was the first person. He was the guy who made it up. I think John Ball was a little too strict in how he got some of his, uh, um, in, in how he, he got his determinations. That probably about concludes it. Um, thank you very much. Bye.